Hey everyone, my name is Sander and today we'll be talking about quantum physics. You all might remember from high school physics classes that a photon, which is a particle of light, has both the properties of a wave and of a particle. However, today we will prove that it also has the properties of a quantum unit. You see, this year in my university I had this elective course called quantum programming and it completely changed the way I'm looking at physics and just the world in general. More exactly, it was one lecture that twisted everything in my head. In this lecture, the professor told us about one experiment with the photons that has an extremely counterintuitive outcome, and about this experiment I would like to tell you today, and moreover, I will actually demonstrate to you how it works on practice. In the end, you'll see that light is not only wave and particle, but it's also a quantum unit, so make sure to watch this video till the end. Let's start with a little bit of background. A quantum unit you might all be familiar with is a qubit, which stands for quantum bit. And compared to a classical computer bit, which can have value 0 or 1, a quantum bit doesn't have a value, instead it has an amplitude of probabilities of having the value. All of that might have sounded a little bit difficult and confusing, but all it really means is that Instead of being strictly one state or the other, in this example 0 or 1, the qubit will have a certain probability to be either 0 or 1. And we say that the qubit is in a superposition between those two values. And that's where the first similarity between a qubit and a photon pops up. A photon's magnetic field looks like waves, and the rotation of those waves determine the direction in which the photon is spinning. And that's called polarization. So if the photon is spinning in a vertical direction, it's said to be a vertically polarized photon. And if it's spinning on the horizontal axis, it's said to be a horizontally polarized photon. And similar to a qubit, a photon isn't constrained to any of those states. It's in a superposition between the two. And we can see that on practice. That is a polarization filter. It's made of very, very small vertical slits, and there are many, many of them. As you can see, everything appears darker through it. But why is that? You see, because the slits are all vertical, those particles of light that are horizontally polarized are unable to pass through it. And only the photons that are spinning on the vertical axis are able to pass. That's why we can see an image that is about 50% darker than the original one. Because half of the light simply can't pass through the filter. So how do you think? What will happen if I would take a similar filter and rotate it 90 degrees? Now, this filter also only allows 50% of the light to pass, but this time it blocks the photons that have a vertical spin. So, how do you think? What will happen if I'll take the first filter, which blocks the horizontally polarized photons, and put it on top of the second filter, which blocks the vertically polarized photons? Correct, it won't allow any light to pass, and we will end up with a black spur. And so far everything was quite intuitive, right? But now the tricky part comes. What will happen if I take a third filter which is similar to the first two, but this time I'll rotate it 45 degrees and place it between the other two filters? So, answer A. Nothing will happen and no light will pass through the filter. Answer B. The color of the filter will change. And answer C. The filter will pass only 25% of the incoming light. I want you to pause down the video and write down your prediction in the comments below. Let's see how many of you got it right. If your answer was C, the filter will let only 25% of the light to pass, then congratulations, that's indeed the correct answer. But why does this counterintuitive thing even happen? If two filters block the light completely, <laughs> why adding a third layer of protection make the thing worse? The reason why it happens is because photon is not necessarily vertically or horizontally polarized. As I said earlier, it can be in a superposition between those two states. This is how it works. It will involve some math, so if you don't want to watch it, skip to 525. If the photon's spinning direction is parallel to the direction of the slits in the filter, the photon will have 100% chance of passing through the filter. Thus, it will have 100% chance to be vertically polarized. In case the spinning direction is perpendicular to the direction of the slits, so it makes a 90 degree angle, the chance of the photon passing is 0%. However, if the angle between the photon's rotation direction and the filter's slits is 45 degrees, there is exactly 50% chance of the photon passing and 50% of it being stopped by the filter. 
So what really happens is our first filter stops all the horizontally polarized photons, which are 50% of the incoming light. All of the photons that now have passed have a vertical spin, so if we would have to add the horizontal filter, none of them would be able to pass, but since the second filter is now tilted at 45 degrees, 50% of the light is still able to pass, and 50% of 50% is 25%. Now all the photons that pass the second filter are tilted 45 degrees from our horizontal filter, so once again only 50% of the light will pass, and 50% out of 25% that we had, and we get 12.5% of light in the end. So by tilting the second filter 45 degrees, we give the vertically polarized photons, those that pass the first filter, a probability of 50% of passing. And then, those photons that made it through the second filter now also have a probability of 50% to pass through the horizontal filter as well. So that is how we can prove that a photon has also the properties of a quantum unit. I don't know about you, but once I've heard about this experiment, I was mind blown and I was eager to try it myself. Physics for me was always that very straightforward thing. If something is logic, then it's gonna happen in the expected way. But there we are, an example where physics behave in a completely counterintuitive way for us, and one that is not just a theory, but easily tested on practice. That's what we just did. Bruh, we live in such a cool world. Hey there. This video is slightly different from the usual game dev and machine learning theme on this channel, but I did really enjoy making it, and I really hope you did enjoy watching it. If you like or maybe dislike this kind of content, feel free to leave your opinion down in the comments below. If you have any ideas you would like to see on this channel, you can also write them in the comments or on my Discord channel. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.